Have you also wondered why all these profitable traders are making trading seem so simple? Well, it's actually because trading does not have to be complicated. In fact, if you are complicating your trading or what you're trading is complicated and hard to understand, you are probably doing it wrong. A lot of people seem to think that trading has to be complicated or look fancy in order for it to work, especially after ICT's teachings. He makes everything look extremely, extremely complicated, but the reality is completely different. You want to find something that has an edge and then you want to simplify it as much as possible so that you can repeat that same thing over and over again. Now, in this video, I'm going to give you a picture perfect strategy that I have simplified as much as possible so that you can repeat that strategy and find success with it. I believe a lot of the problems you're facing is simply because of the fact that you are inconsistent with the trades that you place. If you pull up your last 20 trades, you can probably see a significant difference in each of those trades, which is exactly what we want to try and avoid. We want to try and have our trades look the exact same or similar to each other. And with this strategy, they are going to look similar to each other and it is going to be simple so that you can repeat it. This is a strategy I've used for a very long time and it's helped me pass numerous prop firm challenges. So without further ado, let me show you exactly how this strategy works. So if we take a look at my screen right now, you'll see the strategy that I'm about to show you. I've drawn it out like this to make sure that everybody understands exactly what we're looking for before I jump on an actual chart to show you examples. All we're really looking for here is a higher time frame imbalance slash fair value gap. Now, how do we identify what a higher time frame imbalance is? Well, me personally, all my entries are found between the one and five minute time frame. So a higher time frame imbalance for me is going to be the 15 minute chart and above. Now, what we see is price coming up into this imbalance. We don't really care about the higher time frame market structure. We don't really care about the order flow or the trend. All we care about is that price gets to this hourly imbalance. Now, after we hit this hourly imbalance, we make a low. After we make the low, we take out the high and then we close below the low that we made. Now, it's not really important whether we take out the high or not. Basically, if we take out the high, the, the low here is called a breaker block. If we don't take out the high, it's called a mitigation block. Some people will tell you that it has to take out the high. I personally don't think so. I don't think it matters whether it's a breaker block or a mitigation block. All that matters is that we hit a higher time frame imbalance and close below a low. So as you can see, this low gets closed below right here, right? That is where we are going to look for our entry, but not at the breaker block, but at the fair value gap that we are going to create with the breaker block or mitigation block. So as you can see in this example, we created an imbalance right here, and that overlaps with the breaker block that we made right here. That right there is again going to be my entry. It's going to be at the beginning of the imbalance and not at the actual breaker. Some people will tell you that you have to enter at the breaker block. I personally don't think so. I think it's fine to enter at the imbalance because what happens when you want to enter directly off of the breaker block is that you get left behind. Now, to avoid that, we are going to enter at the beginning of the imbalance as long as it overlaps with the breaker block or mitigation block. If you have a breaker block that overlaps with an imbalance, it's no longer called a breaker block. It's called a unicorn model. That is what ICT teaches, and that is what we're using in this example. Some people say that it has to be a breaker block in order to be a unicorn model. I personally don't think so. I, I don't think it matters whether we take out the high or not, and it's not going to increase or decrease the probabilities of this setup. So do not worry too much about that. All I want you to worry about is price hitting a higher time frame imbalance and then closing below a low, creating a fair value gap and then entering off of that fair value gap. Now, notice how I said exit at internal range liquidity slash equilibrium of the trading range. There's a really specific reason why I want you to exit either at internal range liquidity or equilibrium of the trading range. Equilibrium of the trading range is essentially just the 50% level of the entire range. Internal range liquidity is simply all the lows in that trading leg, except for the lowest point. The lowest point of the entire trading range is called external range liquidity. Now, everything in between that is called internal range liquidity. So in this example, this is the external range liquidity low. This is the internal range liquidity, this low and this low. Now we have to take profit once price hits equilibrium of the trading range, but that does not mean that we have to take our full profit. As you see here, I said runners until external range liquidity. That means once we either hit internal range liquidity or equilibrium of the trading range, you have to take off the majority of your position. So if you are trading 10 contracts, you may take off eight or nine and leave the rest one or two contracts running until the external range liquidity low. And again, the same for Forex. If you're trading 10 lots, I want you to take off seven or eight lots at equilibrium of the trading range or at internal range liquidity, and then leave the rest running until external range liquidity. Now, the reason why I want you to take the majority of your position off at equilibrium is simply because even if the market in this example is still bullish, after hitting a higher time frame imbalance, we are likely going to rebound towards equilibrium of the range, even if the market is bullish. Now, if the market is bullish, 
that is also probably the lowest point that we'll rebalance to. That is why I want you to take the majority of your position off at equilibrium of the trading range and not just hold all your contracts until external range liquidity. But in case we caught the entire reversal or the high of day, we want to leave a few contracts running because that can end up making us a lot of money. Now, what if price ends up reversing and hitting our break even? That doesn't really matter, right? We are going to make a little bit less money, but that is okay. Now, preferably, I want you to get filled before we hit internal range liquidity. As you can see, this low did not take out this low, and then we got filled. Had this low taken out this low, and then we have gotten filled, that makes the probability of this setup go down a little bit. Now, if price ends up hitting equilibrium before filling you, disregard the setup completely. Now, in terms of the stop loss, I want you to put your stop at the most recent swing high always. So now that we got that covered, let's jump onto an actual chart and let me show you a few examples of this playing out. Now, here we are on the E-mini NASDAQ 100 on the hourly chart. Now, we don't want to pay attention to the market structure. We don't want to pay attention to the order flow. What we want to pay attention to is simply this annotated hourly imbalance that we've just hit. Now, here we are on a one minute time frame. And as you can see, this is the hourly imbalance that I've marked out. It does not matter whether price wants to reverse here, here or here. Some people may say, well, it went too far up into the hourly imbalance for me to believe that this imbalance is going to hold. That does not matter. Price can fill the entire imbalance and have this setup still playing out. So now all we're looking for is the exact model that I just showed you on this chart. So I'm going to wait for a down close swing low to get close below. And then I'm going to look for a fair value gap to overlap with that low. Now, right here, we create a swing low. And as you can see, this high took out this high. Therefore, if we end up close and below this down close or bearish swing low, that is going to be a breaker block. Now, right here at 0212, this very candle closes below this bearish swing low. Now, with that closure actually comes a small fair gap right here, which is the exact imbalance that we are going to use as our entry. So I'm going to put my entry at the beginning of that imbalance, not at the breaker. I'm going to put my stop loss at the recent swing high, and my take profit is going to be equilibrium of the entire trading range. Now, we use a Fibonacci extension tool to figure out where that is right here at the 50% level is equilibrium of the trading range. And we're going to use that as our take profit. So now let's play this trade out and let's see how it goes. Now, as you can see, this trade played out perfectly. This is not going to happen nine times out of 10. Okay. This is a picture perfect example, but nonetheless, this is exactly what we're looking for. And as you can see, price ended up tapping 50% or equilibrium of the trading range to the absolute T and then reversed, right? That is exactly why I want to use equilibrium as my take profit. Again, because if the market is still bullish, we can take a short and expect it to work until equilibrium of the trading range, because once price has hit a higher time frame and balance, it is likely going to rebalance towards equilibrium, even if it's still bullish. Now, where do we go break even? I think that's very subjective. And if you have a certain way that you like to go break even, I want you to continue doing that. Me personally, I go break even whenever it makes sense. So for example, at internal range liquidity. So right here, this is really the only internal range liquidity that we have before we hit take profit. So that would be my break even point. But also you can use break even when price is about halfway towards your take profit. So somewhere like here, I could have went break even if that's what I wanted. But it is important that if you have internal range liquidity, you have to move your stops to break even because that can also be a point of reversal. And we don't want you to get stopped out if the market wants to reverse off of an internal range liquidity low instead of equilibrium. Here is the second example also on the E-mini NASDAQ. Now, this does also work for Forex and crypto. I'm simply using the NASDAQ because that is what I trade myself. This is, again, the hourly chart. I'm going to mark out the hourly imbalance that we have here. I'm then going to jump to a one minute time frame and I'm going to wait for the exact model that we just used. Right here is when I would look for my entry because we have a bullish swing high right there that happened after we hit the hourly imbalance that we have annotated here at 12 o'clock. Now, my entry is going to be the beginning of this larger imbalance. My stop is going to go to this low and my take profit in this example can go to the high. OK, now the reason for this is because if I draw out equilibrium of the trading range, notice how close my entry is to equilibrium. This right here would not be a very good take profit. So instead, I'm going to risk it. I'm going to take my profit at external range liquidity, but my stop loss has to go to break even as soon as we hit equilibrium of the trading range, because that is normally when I would take my profit. And again, if the market is bearish, equilibrium is likely the highest point that we are going to go to before reversing again. So I'm going to use it as a break even point instead of my take profit point. 
and I'm willing to risk it even though it's a very, very fast break even. Now let's see what happens. Now right here is when we would be break even on this position. Notice how the market actually came down towards our stop loss for a little bit and some people would probably panic. Now nine times out of 10 with this strategy, you are gonna have a decent sized stop loss, which I want you to have. I see a lot of new traders come into the market use a tiny, tiny stop loss because they want this huge risk to reward, but it ends up blowing them because they are simply not giving their trades enough breathing room. You have to understand that you can simply not be that precise every single time and call the point of reversal to the absolute T. Therefore, you have to give your stops a bit of breathing room. Now let's play it out here and see what happens. And we in fact do end up hitting take profit. I actually took this trade personally, so I don't just talk the talk, I also walk the walk. This is a strategy that I use myself and I find it absolutely amazing. This is not the only thing that I use, but I've used this for a very, very long time. And the reason for that is because I'm able to simplify it and, and, and really repeat this strategy over and over again. When you can simplify and repeat a strategy, that means you can also refine it, which is exactly what we want to do as traders. A lot of people think that trading has to be hard or complicated in order to work, but in reality, it's the exact opposite. What you want to do is find something that you know has an edge over the market and then simplify it as much as possible so that it is repeatable without problem. That is exactly what we want to get at as traders. It does not have to be complicated. It does not have to look fancy and you do not need a 10 risk to reward on all your trades. When you choose your risk to reward, you can go for a one to one R, you can go for a 10R. It does not really matter. It all comes down to you. Do you like losing a lot or do you not like losing a lot, right? Because if you are going for a lower risk to reward, you are not going to lose as much as someone who is going for a higher risk to reward. So it's either low risk to reward, high win rate, high risk to reward, low win rate. You simply cannot get both. This strategy specifically, I have years of data backing it up. This is the real deal and it does work once you refine it enough. Just because it works for me does not mean it will work for you unless you give it enough time. Do not abandon the strategy because you lose three or four trades. You simply have to go through thick and thin with your strategy in order for it to work. So if you don't have a set strategy, start looking for this on your chart and try and implement it in your day to day. I've tried to make it as simple as possible so that you can repeat it over and over again. Thank you a lot for watching and I hope to see you in my next video.